What's up guys, my name is Chris and today I'm showing you guys how to use EV Synth with 360 video. Yes, the thing I've been doing for about a month, I finally got it to work. About a month ago on my community page, I posted a photo of me trying to use, you know, 360 camera with EV Synth and I got this unstitched version right. The problem is it wasn't wanting to stitch and I couldn't get it to stitch correctly with EV Synth, but I finally figured it out, I finally got the right settings and I was just doing things in the wrong order. So with that being said, Here's the unstitched version right now because I can't show 360 video on the same one. And if you want to see the fully 360 variant of this video, I have a link in the description down below and right up here in this card, though I do ask you to wait till after the video so I can get that sweet, sweet watch time and retention in. And let's just get into the tutorial. Okay, so before we actually get to the software aspect of this, something really important about recording with the 360 camera. This is the Samsung Gear 360 2017 model. Now this one is actually pretty interesting because it's so small, it's lightweight, and it's super, it's super tiny. The resolution is only 4K, which is not great for 360, but it does its job and was able to enable me to do what I did here. What I essentially did is I had this camera on top of all my light stands. I was just able to walk around it in a circle just to get the whole 360 aspect of the video down and I used that. Something that I didn't realize and that I had to learn later on was that there's a very defined stitch point. I knew there would be the stitch points on the sides of the camera where the lenses aren't, where the lenses are not. But there's also a stitch point at the very front of the camera. So the front of the camera where there's the recording button, it cuts it right in the middle of that lens because that's going to be the stitching point for the sides of it. So you can have a fluid 360 like left to right. So that's the interesting thing. You can't cross that middle boundary because if you're going from the right side of the camera to the left and you cross through it and it jumps over, I don't think that made sense. You need a new keyframe to start it off all the way. So it's something you just got to be aware of with how you're actually recording these things. So that's my one and only big tip when it comes down to it. Also just making sure, you know, lighting looks good, but that's, that's general videography. That's not, we're not talking about that today. So now we're finally gonna get into this, you know, software aspect of it. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna open your 360 app of choice. Now for me, I'm kind of, you know, pigeonholed into this because it's a Samsung Gear 360, so Action Director 360 works best because that's the one Samsung worked with them on. The problem is it sucks. It is the worst software for 360 stuff ever. I'm just lazy and don't want to learn a new software. So there's that. Um, all you literally have to do is just find your footage. So for me, it's 360-0009. I drag and drop into here. It's going to import and it's going to stitch it up together. Now it does have a bit of a wait time for mine. Since I've already done this one, it, there's no wait time, but there usually is a bit of a wait time. It's usually only like a few minutes, but from there you can look around and you have your 360 space that you look around in. Now you'll notice from this one, it's a little grainy. The footage is not very clear and it's a little grainy and that's mostly because I didn't have any lights on. This was all daylight and stuff from the kitchen. So, you know, I was, I just didn't set up my lights. So if I would have done that, there would have been less grain to deal with, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna matter because we're going to right click the footage, open file location, and it brings up this folder. And right here is the finished stitches. These are the stitching outputs that we have. So we're just gonna take that guy and we're gonna import it to After Effects, but before that, Close Action Director, it sucks. Like everything else with After Effects, you're gonna import your footage, you're gonna control M, it's gonna bring up your render queue. You're gonna change lossless down over here from AVI to PNG sequence, select okay. You can leave it whatever you wanna name it, but make sure it's saved in a subfolder. So we're just gonna leave it as it is right there and I'm just going to change it to dash two to make sure it doesn't get saved over the old one I have right there. Make sure you keep the brackets and the pound symbols in there because that makes sure that it's all sequential order 001, 002, 003, so on and so forth. Gonna click save and we're gonna click render. All right, and after it's done exporting, here are the keyframes that we have. These are all of them. You can choose whichever one you like the most, but at the end of the day, you're just gonna make sure you pick the one that you think is gonna work the best. Depending on how you do this, you might need multiple keyframes because if you notice, I start on the right side of the frame and there's that little, there's that one little line right there on the far right, the edge of the frame. And that same line on the left of the frame, that is the very front of this 360 camera. I'm not sure how every other 360 camera splices these together, but I know for mine specifically, those endpoints on the left and the right is the dead center of this lens. So I gotta make sure whenever I'm recording this, I don't cross that cross member, don't want to cross that frame because I'll just teleport from the right side of the frame to the left and EV Synth isn't gonna know, well, you know, where I went. It doesn't know where to put my data. So it's just gonna color me like the whole rest of the background. You can fix that by using more keyframes, but you know, I don't wanna use more keyframes than I have to because it takes forever for these things to render as it is. So just make sure that whenever you're going through there, you just go through the middle of the frame, which means you'd go from the center around the long way and around the other long way. Like just make sure you keep going back and forth unless you wanna use more keyframes. But at that point, it's all on however you want to do that and however it works best for your story and what you're trying to tell. 
So with that, honestly, the keyframe for me doesn't matter in this aspect. So all I'm gonna do is pick uh, 66 for order 66. So where's 66? It's right here. All right, now that we have keyframe 66 to use, you can edit that however you want to. Use it in Photoshop or in what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the Deep Dream Generator and, you know, do another great Deep Dream. We're gonna take ours to the Deep Dream Generator and throw it in there like most of our other, you know, EB synths. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag 66 into upload. Change our style, we can do thin style, deep dream, or deep style. I'm just gonna go deep style, star ignite. Real shocker, but I finally actually got my 200 likes needed to unlock HD, so I can do full HD. Well, partial HD, it's more like 720p, but whatever, it works, it's better than it was. And we're gonna click generate, and we're gonna wait for that. And after it's done rendering in the deep dream generator, here is the file size that we get. This is the finished keyframe. Which I think looks pretty good. I ended up not doing starting, I ended up canceling and jumping over to uh, just the plain oil painting setting because I thought it looked a little, uh, little interesting in my opinion. So from there, what you can do is you can upscale it using a ne any number of methods because it's still smaller than 4K. We're gonna come into Photoshop, we're gonna drag and drop any one of the frames from our regular you know, video. That's gonna give us our baseline size. Then we're gonna go back, we're gonna drag in that deep dreamed frame and it's only gonna take up about a quarter of our actual frame. Wow, that's even smaller than I expected my B. All right, so we're gonna just upscale that to the regular size, and this does make us lose image quality. This does make it a lot blurrier than what we normally have, and we're just gonna export that as it is. Same naming, same naming conventions as usual, name it whatever you need to, but then we're gonna do one extra step to make this look just a little bit crisper than we usually would. We come up here, we're gonna make a new tab, we're gonna go to Waifu 2X. Now this is actually a program that somebody made that you can actually use to upscale images. It was originally made to upscale, you know, anime art style photos and stuff like that that are in too low of a resolution as an added benefit of being able to use amazingly with EBSynth stuff. So we're gonna drag and drop this onto there. You're gonna select photo, you're gonna click none on the noise reduction. Upscaling, since you've already upscaled it to the correct size, you're gonna select none, select I'm not a robot and click download. Now to that point, it's gonna save the file and it's gonna be the same resolution of what it was, but it's gonna be slightly crisper. It's not gonna fix everything, but it's just gonna make it a little bit better to maybe help us out. It just gives us a little bit more clarity that we can work with. So after all that is said and done, we're gonna come over to EBSynth. And honestly, this is the same as everything else. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna jump in, drag our video folder over, drag our keyframe over, and then you know add everything in. So it's keyframe 66, Stop is zero, zero, and one of our very last keyframe is, which for us is 387. So we're gonna add keyframe 387 as our final stop, 387. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to our advanced settings, change deep flicker down to a one, or up to a one, keep mapping and diversity where it is, and we're just gonna click synth. That's pretty much it, and we just wait for that to render since it is such a large file, since it is 4K, it's gonna take a lot longer than usual. It takes mine about four-ish hours for it to finish all the way through, but I also have a dedicated gaming and, you know, editing computer. Some of you with different computers will experience different things. If you have a higher-end graphics card and processor, it's gonna be a lot quicker. If you have a lower-end one, it's gonna be a lot slower. What I typically do is I start these before I go to bed and I just, you know, start however many so I can have, I think, five or six EV synths running at a time. And that takes care of it for me. I just go to sleep with it running and by the time I wake up in the morning, it's done and it's working. So after it's done rendering, what we have here is this right here. We have our keyframe folder filled with everything. This is every keyframe or every frame that we have from this video, all finally EBSynthed. We're gonna jump into Premiere. Does not matter where your video footage is. This is my general YouTube title sequence that I have going. All right, so what we're gonna do is after we're in Premiere Pro, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop my footage in there. That entire folder is now sitting in my Premiere project. I'm gonna select this little button down here, Automate Sequence. After clicking that, it's gonna bring up this little menu. Biggest thing to select is frames per still, make sure it's one frame. That means it's one sec, one picture for every single frame. You're gonna click OK, and it's going to bring everything in. And just like that, we have a very, very tiny couple seconds video sequence. We're gonna select all, we're gonna right click, and we're gonna click Nest. Doesn't matter what's named, because you're just gonna export it after this anyway. Now you're gonna select the in and out if you have more stuff in your project folder, like me. But if you're actually not like me and you actually have organization going through your, you know, projects, you're just going to export it as is. In your export settings, you're going to click some very important things. Name doesn't really matter. You want it to match whatever it looks like. Render maximum depth, yes, encoding settings, none of that matters. The highest bitrate that you can do that this camera records in 
and you're gonna go down to VR video, videos VR, you're gonna check that, yes. Depending on the type of camera that you use, you might wanna change your frame layout. If it's stereoscopic over under video, you're gonna select that one. If it's stereoscopic side by side, then it's left and right, you're gonna click that one. This one's a monoscopic, that means that all the camera has been put into one as it is. So from there, you're just gonna leave everything pretty much the same, 360 fields of view, 180 up and down. You're gonna click export, and we wait. Again, this is a lot of waiting, honestly. And after it's done rendering, here's what we get all the way. We get this nice little thing of me walking across, talking to the camera, you know, just fake talking, walking back and forth. Since I turned, I could have used a different keyframe there because it messed my shirt up. It messed my arm and my shirt up, blending into the background. And you'll see right there at the very end, I'm in the left and the right. My left side is blending in with the background a lot more, whereas my right side, my arm isn't. Well, it still is, but it's a work in progress, guys. That's all I can say. If I would have used more keyframes in this one, it would have been better. But this is just a live and learn aspect of this. So from there, we can just use that. And if you want to see how this looks in a full 360 space, again, I have the video in the description down below, and I'll link it again in the cards right up here. The biggest thing with this is the Gear 360 doesn't have the, enough resolution. Realistically, for a good 360 video, you want to have 16K, and this thing only does 4K, and it's, you know, it's, it's only 4K. At the end of the day, 16K is gonna be so much more data, so much more information that the, you can use in 360 to make it less blurry, less muddy, and actually make it look better. So that being said, I'll have to redo this again eventually after I can do, you know, 16K. And if anybody has a large 16K like setup that you want to help collab with, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to work with you on something like this. And I would love to make this kind of like a reality, like a 360 walk around in like this dream world. So that being said, I love you guys. Click that subscribe button. Right up here is a tutorial playlist for other EVSense tutorials. And right over there in the corner is a video that YouTube is saying you guys are going to enjoy. I don't know what that is, so good luck with that. And if you guys want to see more of my videos, click that subscribe button down below. Click the little bell icon to get notified. That being said, I love you all. I'll see you guys in the next upload. Peace out, guys.